Algebra 2, 1.10a, Field Axioms and Properties of Equality. An axiom is a property that we accept without proof. Now, whether that property is an axiom or not, well, then that could be debatable, because we try to pick the more obvious and acceptable properties as axioms, but unfortunately some mathematicians don't agree on which properties are acceptable axioms. Not everyone agrees. But axioms are assumptions, and we assume they're true. Now there's three properties of equality. So for any real numbers, A, B, and C, we have the reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties. Reflexive is like a mirror. It's like a reflection of a mirror. A equals A. It's just reflecting itself. The symmetric one says if A equals B, then B equals A. It's like splitting a heart down the middle with a line of symmetry. And the transitive says that A can be equal to C if they have B in between them. So if A equals B and B equals C, because they both are equal to B, then A has to be equal to C also. See that? Both A and C are equal to B, so they have to be equal to each other also. Now, I have an Algebra 1 video number 2.10C and 2.10D, and it talks about these three properties, and I even have a proof, okay? So we're going to do that in our next video in this playlist, but for right now, let's cover these. So axioms for real numbers. We've got the properties of closure, that's for addition, that every real number a and b, a plus b, is a real number. And the property of closure for multiplication is for every real number a and b, a times b is a real number. And the commutative property says for addition that any real numbers a and b, a plus b is going to equal b plus a, and that it doesn't matter which order we add them. And for multiplication, it doesn't add, matter which order we multiply them. A times B is going to equal B times A. And the associative property says that we can regroup them. We can add B and C and then add A, or we can add A and B and then add C. And for multiplication, we can multiply B and C and then multiply A, or we can multiply A and B and then multiply C, and they'll equal each other. And the distributive property of multiplication over a division says for any numbers, a, b, and c. Now, do you notice up here it says for every real number, for every real number, and then all of a sudden associative says for any number. Hmm. So distributive says for any numbers, a, b, and c, that we can distribute this a to the b and a to the c to get a times b plus a times c. And the identity properties for addition says that if we add a 0, a is going to stay the same and keep its identity. And if we multiply a times a 1, it's going to stay the same and keep its identity. Now here comes the sassy property. It's the property of inverses. It's not agreeable with everybody. So for addition, for each real number a, there's a 1 and only one additive inverse b for which a plus b will equal 0. So if we have a and we add a negative a, it'll equal zero. It'll create a zero pair. We've talked about that, right? And for each non-zero number a, there's one and only one multiplicative inverse b for which a times b is going to equal one. So it works if we have a over b and we multiply it by the reciprocal b over a. That'll equal a one, won't it? Because the numerators and denominators are going to be the same. So we're going to talk about this one a little bit more in a couple seconds. So when a number system like real numbers works in a property, an axiom, we call that axiom, that property, a field axiom. So all a field is, is it's a set of numbers or objects and two operation signs. So this is the commutative property, isn't it? It says that if we have a plus b, it's going to equal b plus a. This is the field. And the field axiom is a plus b equals b plus a. We've got numbers. We've got real numbers and two operation signs. See? So this is the field. And the field axiom is this. OK? It's that property. Now, in Algebra 1, I made a video 2.10a and 2.10b. And I'll have links to that in this description also, so that you can just click on them. And it pretty much says the same thing. But I get into more detail about rational numbers and stuff, because it's Algebra 1.
So here's why the inverse property is sassy. The inverse property of addition and multiplication is not a field axiom for natural or whole numbers. So for addition to have an inverse, if we have an a and we add a negative a, we're going to get a zero, right? It's going to make a zero pair. But natural numbers and whole numbers aren't negatives. Natural numbers are the counting numbers and whole numbers are the natural numbers that have a zero. See? It's the same as natural numbers, we just have a zero in the list. Integers are positive and negatives, and rational numbers have the fractions and decimals. And natural numbers and whole numbers are not negatives or positives or fractions. See? So the inverse property of addition does not work for natural or whole numbers. And for the inverse property of multiplication isn't a field axiom for integers. Because integers are not fractions, and neither are whole numbers or natural numbers. See? We have to get to net the rational numbers before we can say it's a field axiom. See that? And that's in the video 2.10a for Algebra 1 also. If you want to watch that, just go to this description and click on the link. Okay? All right. So axioms are assumed to be true. Theorems have been proved to be true. And we use axioms to get us to theorems. We can use the axiom rules to transform expressions and statements into new expressions and statements. All right? So if anyone asks you, does the inverse property of multiplication work for integers, you know that you can say no, because integers are not fractions, and you can't multiply by the reciprocal to get a 1. See? Our next video is 1.10b, and we're going to write a column proof with our statements on one side and our reasons on the other, and they're going to be numbered, okay? All right. I hope I'll see you there, and I hope you're doing okay. Bye.